In 1862, 38 American Indians were hanged in downtown Mankato, Minnesota. To this day, no one can understand how Abraham Lincoln, the man who freed the slaves in the South, could be the same man who condemned these people to death in what became the largest mass execution in U.S. history. Susan? Thanks for taking some time to talk with me. Always glad to talk to college students. Shall we get to it? Absolutely. Dr. Sibley, popular opinion today suggests your work here is outdated, that hospitals for criminally insane are a waste of tax dollars, and that Freudian approaches are as barbaric and ancient as Skinner's theory. Dr. Skinner's theories have never been abandoned. You still house criminals here, correct? Until they're proven fit to stand trial? And just who decides and when is the decision made to let these patients stand trial? not allow dangerous individuals to walk among us. And what determines who is and isn't dangerous? I'd be happy to show you. Fantastic.
this human. Would you rather they be in prison? If they're insane, they don't deserve to be kept with criminals who are conscious of their actions, correct? That would be inhumane, correct? This is Lisa Marks. She suffered an extreme breakdown due to sexual frustration. Lisa saw me initially due to stress and anxiety caused by her insistence on working a normal retail job and pursuing photography as a, shall we say, hobby. You seem especially tense these days. Nothing unusual, just working two shifts since Wendy went bonkers. And to add to things, this jerk moved in across the hall from me, and he doesn't let a day pass without reminding the piece of shit he is. Explain. The other day, I come home, and he's got his door wide open, and he's sitting on his couch with his coffee table in front of him. I'm quite in the war on poverty. Snap a coil of toots and I'll break your neck and dump you in the Minnesota River. You can't do that. Guess I'll call your boss. I believe the number is 911. I'm doing my job. Mind your own fucking business. How am I supposed to mind my own business when you keep your goddamn door open? Maybe I just wanted to meet you. Sounds invented, Lisa. Are you sure this isn't the stress talking? You call me a liar, Doc? I'm suggesting you may be suffering a form of transference. Transference. Do me a favor, Doc. Phone home and speak English. Describe this man. Physically, I mean. Why? Humor me. Okay. Kato cop. Meaning, ready for his close up with his Gestapo buddies. Keep going. Remember, I want physical details. Uh, okay. He's a slob. Is he in shape? I haven't really sized him up like that, to be honest. But you have. You just described him to me. Uh, no, Doc. He looks like every other pea brain that decides to become a cop. It already does have a warm, comforting look to it, doesn't it? If you say so. This is your story, Lisa, not mine. The point is, he's a piece of shit. He's everything that's wrong with the city, and for this country for that matter. Question what's beyond the wall you're constructing. Give me a break.
pick this up next week. Yeah, sure. See this? You read this crap? Sure don't. Really? Really. You mind? I find it difficult to believe that you don't know anything about this lefty shit. Why is that, Einstein? Isn't your name Lisa Marks? Isn't this your name on your picture? How the fuck do you know my name? It says so on the mailbox. What makes you think there's a more than one Lisa Marks in Mankato? In this town? Say, you get a boyfriend? Yeah. Football. I find that hard to believe. Why? A multi broad like yourself? Bitch. It upset you that he thought you were incapable of maintaining a relationship with a man, didn't it? He had no business seeing you ask nine comment like that. I don't think there are any emotions concealed by your secondary reaction, do you? Getting pissed off is a primary emotion, Doc. Anger is a secondary emotion. Anger is a gift. As long as you continue to fight yourself, you will always rely on generic reactions and fail to mature as a responsible adult. So let me get this straight. This cop acts like a complete douchebag. I let him know he's being a douchebag. And somehow, in the magical world of psychotic therapy... Psychotherapy, Lisa. Psycho, not psychotic. Somehow I'm the fucking villain? I'm curious. We've established that. You're awfully fixated on the fact that your neighbor's a police officer. Where'd you get that from? Does he have handcuffs? I suppose so. How does that make you feel? Tell you what, Doc, I'll get back to you on that one when it becomes something remotely relevant. Are you afraid of learning something about yourself? What the fuck are you talking about? Your passionate resistance to the idea that your neighbor's possession of handcuffs might excite you is a veiled confession. Once again, what the fuck are you talking about? I notice the closer we get to your feelings about this man, your true feelings, that is, the more vulgar your language becomes. Well, he is a vulgar man. How does that make you feel? Haven't I made that obvious? I'm repulsed. Negative emotions are always opposite signals. You've been drinking some goofy water, Doc? Seems to me like you want me to set the two of you up. Now it comes out. Now it comes out. What? You've displaced your feelings for your neighbor by accusing me of experiencing your unconscious desires you refuse to face. gone over again. Thank God. Think about what I said, Lisa. Take a good look at yourself the next time you talk to him. Yeah, sure. Hey, give me a drink of that beer. Oh, that's my free little neighbor. Carol, isn't it? No. You're still dressed? If you want her to join in, it's gonna cost you another 50 bucks. Keep your fucking trap shut. Hey, if you want to join in, let me know.
Do something stupid, bitch. I triple dog dare you. sounds of pleasure can often be deceiving to one who is unaware of pleasure themselves. She said no. She said she didn't want him to fuck her like that. Did it excite you? Are you crazy? Lisa, for a month now, all you've talked about is this neighbor of yours. I know. I know. It bothers me. If you weren't such a fucking prick. These words you use to insult him are just manifestations of your own unconscious desires. You're stretching it, Doc. Really stretching it. Well, you can resist me, but you can't escape from yourself. Let's talk about something else. Good. How's your photography coming? I haven't had much time for it since, you know, since when you disappeared. Mm. Yeah, it's tragic. So you haven't had any photographs published since... What was your last gig? Ketotherapy. And you were taking pictures of documents? Yeah, a picture of the execution order for the 38 Sioux, signed by Abe Lincoln, and then another document where his signature looks totally different. Is that the kind of photography you enjoy? Not really. Are you frustrated about that? I don't know. Didn't she say your neighbor took an interest in those photographs? Were you upset that that was the only work he had to judge your talent by? <laughs> I'm telling you, if you confront these feelings you have about that man, you'll take a giant leap towards recovery. Well, let's not schedule a wedding just yet, shall we? Of course not. You and I still have work to do.
Dead stars stink. Dawn is here. The poetic carcass of a girl. Every night you march up here, you have an answer. What do you got against me anyways? You a dyke? Shucks. You got me. I knew it. Believe it or not, I can help you out. Is that right? Every lesbo that I met, all they need is one good fuck. Believe it or not, I can be one hell of a lot. Well then why don't you go fuck yourself? No, listen. I'm not trying to be mean. I just don't get involved with people that live in the same apartment building as me. Could cause problems on the road, you know? No, I sure don't. It's like sleeping with someone at work. Things get un uncomfortable. There's no avoiding it. I slept with a lot of women that I've worked with and I sure feel comfortable. Well, let me think about it. If I feel like I need a good fuck, I'll like it. Awesome. Totally awesome. Yeah? Just wanted to let you know, I'm ready to go anytime you are. Most girls, I don't give you the option, but since you're a smart broad and all, you probably know about safe sex. I think I have to move. You go that far to avoid confronting your true feelings? I'm perfectly comfortable with my true feelings. He's a sick, despicable piece of shit. So now you're focused on his anal functions. Ugh. You're so obviously in denial, Lisa. I actually feel pain watching you hide from yourself. Sucks for you, Doc. Let's clarify things. You're frustrated because it's possible that you're sexually attracted to a man you find intellectually inferior, yes? Okay, let's just say, and I'm only doing this to humor you, Doc. No, you're not, but go ahead. Let's just say this science fiction invasion of the body snatchers bullshit you're trying to run on me is true. Let's just suppose. Sure, let's. What would be an appropriate way to test your, uh, May I be so bold as to call it a theory? Until you're willing to accept it as fact, that would be the best thing to call it. Fine. How would I do that? Has this gentleman made any amorous advances? Ha! Next time, take him up on it. Let your emotions dictate how things go. Let go of your conscious reservations and see if this man doesn't bring you peace of mind, body, and soul. Oh, Jesus, Doc. That's really, really radical. Prove me wrong. Give the guy a chance. See if you don't come back here with a smile on your face that even Prozac couldn't recreate.
There she is. Here I am. What? No attitude? Not tonight, Franklin. Just call me Frankie. Frankie. Shit. Shit. Somebody switched noggins with you? What? I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't quite understand that. Well, it's just that you've been so bitchy at me. I might have to check you out for pods or something. Ah, shit. You want to head inside, have a beer, and relax? Sure, Frankie. Let's relax. What you looking at? Nothing. I see you like balling my handcuffs. I knew you had a dirty side. How about that beer? Sure. Good Lord. I knew you were a wild one, I can tell. I took some psychology back in the day. We can use those. I chained up the whore last week. Played with all three holes. You ever wear them? Now you're just pinking. Turn around. Officer, I swear I'm innocent. That a fact. Just do what feels natural. Good advice. Obviously, she repressed her desire for her neighbor to the failsafe point, where sexual desire turns violent. There's no evidence that sex and violence are related. There's no evidence that they are. Nonsense. It's a lie. Just as many other lies handed down from the perverts at the Kingsley Institute. Perhaps you're repressed as well. Fair enough. Okay. Sure. Uh, George Mason. An example of the power of fear. Irrational fear, of course. Bullshit. The notion that fears should be considered irrational is becoming antiquated as well. What on earth for? Well, you know how Lisa told you, anger is a gift, so is fear. It's possible George wasn't altogether sane to begin with.
you are. I thought I was gonna have to call the National Guard. Have you seen this? Garbage! Fuck is garbage. You see what's on the floor? Well, yeah, you just put it there. They let it lie. They just let it lie. Gosh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't like that being on the floor there. Well, why don't you just pick it up then? I can't. George Adam Mason, what on earth am I going to do with you? What's for dinner? Do you feel like cooking? Uh, well, I guess I'll put some hot pockets in the microwave. We'll call it a feast. Sounds great. About time, mister. Your hot pocket is going to be a cold pocket pretty soon. You don't want a cold pocket, I can assure you that. What took you so long? I was washing my hands. For 20 minutes? Have you ever wondered if microwaves are the reason so many people have cancer? Don't be silly. Bad things happen, Barbara. You've been eating microwave food for years. If you stop now, it'd be like you're cheating or something. When people start to talk about the rumor, bad things happen. Rumors? What rumors? I haven't heard any rumors. Bad things! Bad things, Barbara. If you're going to be a big meanie, I'm just going to go watch the DVR without you. I don't care about that. You don't care if you do anything with me anymore. Parents, does your teenager sit around and sulk all day? Does your teenager dislike going to school, doing homework, and most importantly, doing what he's told? Do you suspect your teenager of masturbating, listening to rebellious music, drinking alcohol or using drugs, or most distressing of all, chasing the opposite gender for sexual gratification? If so, you've got a problem, child. Here at the Mankato Facility for Mental Adjustment, we use a variety of techniques to teach your teenager how to fall in line and obey authority under any circumstance. Hun, are you washing the dishes? No. can't stop, Barbara. They're coming to get me, Barbara. The rumors, the reporters, the humiliation. They're coming to get me. I'm going all psycho on me, mister. That might be acceptable in Wisconsin, not in Minnesota. There's only one cure for that. 
No. Yes. You betcha, mister. You're going to make an appointment with Dr. Sibley. And he's going to fix your brain. Or I'm packing my bags. Make no mistake. I've done what I can to live with you. But I'm not happy about having to do those things. Mr. Mason. I see. Have a seat, why don't you? My wife and I went to Gustavus together. Sure did enjoy her in college. Anyway, she tells me you've become neurotic. Overnight, she says. I've been this way before. Oh? You want to talk about it? When I was a kid, some professors at the college they pestered my father wanted to know about the hangings. The Indians? Of course. Jeez. You know darn well what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Everybody knows it was my great-great-great-grandfather who delivered the order. That's all. Did your father cooperate? Sure. Then the national media showed up. They accused my family, made it seem like we were the only ones who were responsible for the hangings. So, my father, you know, hanged himself. And that's when you had problems. Why are you having problems now? It 
It's these nosy young women. They think it's their job to be minding everyone's business. I think they just let these old bones stay in the ground. Exactly. Right off the bat, I'd say you've developed severe obsessive compulsive disorder as a result of guilt. My wife says I need to have my brain fixed. Not sure what you're acting so smug for, I might add. I beg your pardon. You and me, Doc? We know exactly who forged the execution order. Is that a fact? I don't see how you can be so calm. As far as I'm concerned, your ancestors rode right alongside mine. Well, this is about you, George, not me. Darn it! Barbara, gosh darn it. What have I told you about keeping the bathroom clean? Oh gosh, can't you just step around it? Flush it. We can move, you know. It might be good for the both of us. I mean, I work for farmers. You work for Prairie United. There are insurance in banks all over the country. Shouldn't be too much of a pill to find a new career in a new town. Your family's been living here since before the Indian War. So? You don't think... If I go somewhere else, the curse won't follow me? Don't be silly. You ever given a thought to why I might want to move? Any progress? I don't think so. And it's time to address your fears head on. Mr. Mason, I want you to lean forward and remove one of the tissues you're sitting on. Did you do your homework?
So in other words, you didn't. You didn't do what I asked. Dr. Sibley, it's, it's like I live in a bubble. I can't let anything get past the bubble. Didn't I tell you it would be all right to scrub your hands after you got off the elevator? But I, I don't know who's been touching those buttons or what they're infected with. Influenza. Ebola. Gosh, George, I don't know how much more I can take. I'm taking a whole lot, mister. A whole lot. You don't eat, you don't sleep, you don't do anything but go to the bank and then come home and act crazy. Doctor, you're working with me. Oh no, gosh, no. I don't think we can say anything is working. We've got to act fast. My wife, she's acting crazy. Please. Please. Do doctor! What's that? You want my pen straightened out? Well then, why don't you straighten it out? It's your pen, Doctor. You should straighten it out. You can try something slightly more radical. Yes. Yes. Have you ever been hypnotized? All right. I want you to lean back, close your eyes, and imagine that there's a hole in the top of your skull, and that cool, fresh air is flowing. All that you find terrifying, disturbing, all that you fear, from now on you will find funny, adorable. You will laugh at anything that might frighten you. Do you understand, George? Yes. You will not be repulsed by anything, even your own actions that you might once have found repulsive. Any urge you get, no matter what others may think, you will act on. You will be free from all worry and judgment. Is that clear? Yes. Very good. Now I'm going to count down from ten to one, and when I get to one, you're going to be fully conscious. Ten, nine, eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. George? George, would you please straighten out my pen? Would you mind removing one of those tissues you're sitting on? George, if you pick that tissue up with your hands, you'll be touching microbacteria from all my other patients. Crazy guy? You can see I wasn't lying about the crazy part. I'm not crazy. You're the one who's crazy. <laughs> Mister, there's appropriate and inappropriate ways of dealing with this situation. Right now, I find your reaction inappropriate. <laughs> listen, listen. Buddy. <laughs> Fuck you. Your wife already performed that task. Quite. Boys, we're too rational about this. You expect this shell of a man to be rational? But you are hilarious. <laughs> Both of you! Just hysterical. What's your problem? I ain't letting you walk out of here. Like hell. George, for goodness sake! <laughs> Seems, seems like you care more about this stranger than you do about me. George, I've been sleeping around on you for years. Gosh, since college. That's right, honey. You've been putting your privates where dozens of other men have been putting theirs. Call the cops. I'm pressing charges. <laughs> me. Oh, really? Hypnosis has been proven to be dangerous. I don't see how. No, you are reprogramming a human being, tempered with his unconscious. I don't see any difference between that and lobotomizing a patient, either with drugs or the old-fashioned way. You sound an awful lot like someone with an agenda. I'm just a student, doctor. Surely you don't mind me testing my own theories. Are you guys planting something in the air? If you'd like to come back another time, I'm sure we can arrange it. I'll be fine. You sure?
Here we have Wendy Green. Miss Green is a conspiracy nut. She suffers from the same dangerous delusions as all the freaks out there who think Bigfoot killed John Kennedy. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been seven days since my last confession. Go ahead, my child. I accuse myself of the following sins. I used the Lord's name in vain twelve times this week. Lost count of my impure thoughts. Took a guy I met in a bar home on Saturday and, you know, did that thing we're not supposed to do until we're married. Thirty Hail Marys and one act of kindness on someone of a lesser condition than yourself. Father? Yes, my child. I have a piece of information, a dangerous piece of information. It could get me and others in trouble for sharing it. What would be the purpose of sharing this information? It's what I do, Father. I edit a zine that challenges the status quo. Is this some sort of communist activity? Geez, Louise, Father, no. Anyone who needs to be taken to task gets written about. Would you feel as though you were being dishonest by not sharing this information? Yes. The Lord says to always do the right thing. But I would suggest you do what you feel is right. Do you understand the difference? Recall the book of Genesis. It's a common misconception that Eve caused Adam's downfall. But Adam made a choice for himself. You must do the same, knowing full well, as Adam did, the consequences of your decision.
Susie Q, how they hanging? Same old, same old. Listen, darling, I have an assignment for you, if you're interested. Is it dangerous? Yeah, it's a little dangerous, maybe. Cool, I'll do it. Great. I'll come by the Union tomorrow and give you all the details. Okay, I'll see you then. Thank you. Have a seat. Just how much should I cooperate knowing you think my profession is, and I'm quoting you, a cult? Dr. Sibley, I think we made our case rather clear on that issue. A cult? Did you read the article? How could I not? Then you'd understand our position. It's really just a case of, you know, whatever gets you through the I'm helping sick people. We can talk about this another time. I have to be to work in an hour. So what nonsense are you cooking up now? We're putting together an article on the hangings. Why on earth would you do that? We have evidence that Lincoln did not okay the executions. Nonsense. Your great-great-great-grandfather decreed the order. What does that have to do with anything, young lady? Don't get defensive, Dr. Sibley. This interview is over. Surely you know that's a veiled admission of guilt. Out! They're beautiful. I didn't order any pizza. You don't have to. It's on me. I get a free pizza every night for working there. I want you to have it. No way, baby. It's yours.
what I said on the phone? Isn't this the way it's supposed to be? No, dummy, I already fixed that. Well, this is a little creepy. And my furniture being tampered with? That's not strange. Are you sure the couch was turning around? Do you want something to drink? Okay, so let's pretend all this is really happening. Who and why? I think it's obvious. Pedotherapy, the hanging issue. We haven't even put that issue up yet. But we've been talking to people, taking pictures. We've raised the wrong eyebrows. You know what I'm saying? Sweetheart, I would like to believe the zine is that important, but really, give me a break. We photocopy it at Kinko's. You don't believe in the zine? I think it's going to take more time to ruffle up enough feathers to make people do whatever it is you think people are doing. Is that the police? They said I was overreacting. They're going to send someone over tomorrow or the day after whenever they get around to it. Who is it? It's me, Johnny Gannon. Oh, good call. It's me, Johnny Gannon, from last night and the night before. Didn't I tell you not to bring me any more pizza? I'll take it. Say, Bubba, you're not the psycho writing her letters, are you? Yeah, whatever. Stop bugging my friend. It's probably him. The letter's in. When the cops show up, tell them about him. Do you have the proofs for the new issue ready to go to the printers? 
Could you do that tomorrow? Let's get the scene out as soon as possible. Sure. Somebody's in here. You're in for a sore surprise. back to the living. If you exhibit any kind of hostility, this relationship won't evolve. Now, if you be a good girl, 
and speaking into her voice, I'll take that gag off. If you scream, if you do anything stupid, I'll snap her neck and dump you in the Minnesota River. I scream? My neighbors will know something's wrong. Not in time to save you. Are you the creep that's been stalking me? On behalf of someone else? Yes. Why? These are all over town. I imagine your web person is some of your dear subscribers. Yeah, that's what I thought. What to do? What to do? If the information's already out there, what can you do? You don't understand power, do you? I've dedicated my life to destroying it. That's just it. You can. Even I can. Then why do you work for them? It's good to be in the loop. Let's just say, rather, it's healthy to be in the loop. But when they don't need you anymore, they'll get rid of you just the same. That is a risk. Well, now, who the hell was that? Johnny Gannon, the pizza boy. He's obsessed with me. <laughs> Competition. Where's Miss Green? Well, Johnny, she's been waiting for you. I don't know what kind of kinky shit you people are into, but I'm not having any of it. Don't worry, my love. We'll find you the help you need. Oh my god. Of course, the detective, like everything else she imagined, was just a figment. The stress of trying to work a normal job, edit an underground journal she knew nobody would appreciate, must have made her snap. The detective... Wasn't that the same? You need to sit down, young lady. I'll get a nurse in a moment. You think I don't know you wrote that article? You think I'd let you little shits just persecute my ancestors like that? Folks like you are going to learn to let the secrets from the past stay buried. You're going to learn if it's the last goddamn thing you do on this earth. In 1862, 38 American Indians were hanged in downtown Mankato, Minnesota. To this day, no one can understand how Abraham Lincoln, the man who freed the slaves in the South, could be the same man who condemned these people to death in what became the largest mass execution in U.S. history. <laughs> 